So, you know, we in a new year, new me season. Yes. But a lot of us still have some of the same goals from 2023. And a lot of y'all, and I know for sure because y'all came up to me and asked. You did. A lot of y'all wanted to start a podcast. Yes. I got good news for you, player. Spotify for podcasts is here for every need you have. We've been using Spotify for podcasters since we started our podcast. It's so easy. You literally record, edit, and upload all from your phone, your computer. So no matter what your setup looks like, you can start now. Yes, get your conversations, your opinion, your views out to the world. People need to hear you. You can distribute your podcast to Spotify and anywhere else that podcasts are heard. With Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a multitude of ways. Ads or podcast subscriptions. I mean, it's an easy way to get your visions out to the world and earn some extra pocket change. Yeah, my favorite thing about all of this is free 99. Yes. <laughs> you know, they don't charge you a dime. So you really got nothing holding you back. Today, today, not tomorrow, today, let's be heard. Spotify for podcasters. Let's be seen. Welcome or welcome back to the For the Healthy Host podcast where we talk about self-awareness, conscious living, and everything in between. I'm your host, Ree. Thank you so much for joining me today and allowing me to be a part of your journey. It has been such a long week. I'm recording this on a Friday, and when I tell y'all the week has been overwhelming, that would be an absolute understatement. So, I'm happy I get to unwind and, you know, end the work week off with recording the podcast. I always fear like that one day I'm going to run out of topics or run out of like things to talk about with y'all. But I just don't know that that'll ever, that'll ever happen because like things are always on my mind and I always have like so many things, so many competing things that I want to talk to y'all about. Like at once, and I can never really make up my mind until the very last minute. I make up my mind on what's on my heart to say because I always feel like, um, you know, I have to make sure, like I said, that it's on my heart and it's the right time. I feel like divine timing is everything. So I was scrolling through like my notes on my iPhone and I stumbled across some notes that I took December 2017 from this interview that I watched every day. During that year, I watched their interview every single day, and the interview is called Get Paid to Be Yourself. Ironically, like, that is actually one of the topics that, or one of the competing topics that I wanted to talk to y'all about. So I was like, this has to be a sign. This has got to be a sign. So that's what we're going to talk about today, getting paid to be yourself. So going back to, like I said, the interview um, that I watched every single day, you guys don't know who Dame Dash is. He is well-respected in the black community, in the hip-hop community. He is a hip-hop mogul. Um, he is an entrepreneur, and he really is a controversial person. Like, some people like him. Some people don't. I think that he always has, like, a good, really good message, but I think sometimes people may not relate to his deliverable or his delivery. So I think that's how he can be, you know, kind of controversial sometimes. But his interview, it is just what I needed during that time of my life. I kind of talked about this, um, I think, if not the last episode, the episode before that, where I was just really down and out. I was at a really low point in my life. So his interview is really what I needed. He really just talked about pretty much doing it yourself, getting paid to be yourself. Listening to that or watching that, if you have the time, it really, really motivated me every single day, gave me what I needed, and encouraged me to, like Dame stressed, do it myself. I think the good thing about getting paid to be yourself is that it looks so different for everybody and it's literally limitless I honestly feel like that we are all creators like even if people be like I'm not that creative yes you are you are we are all so creative and we all have this 
thing, this power, this talent that other people don't have. And there are people in the world that need that talent, that need our services. You know what I mean? So that's really, really important to know. For example, there's this girl on Instagram who is an artist. And she is, she's one of the people that really motivated me way back when also. Her stuff was in like art museums and she also had like summer camp for kids, like an art summer, summer camp for kids. My point being is she used her talents and learned how to flip it in so many different ways. And that was so inspiring to me. She used her talents and learned how to flip them in so many ways to serve, but also live an abundant life. And that to me is what getting paid to be yourself is all about. The thing about getting paid to be yourself, like I said before, it looks so different for so many of us. So I just encourage you to like just keep an open mind. Don't have your mind closed because I'm telling you, regardless of what your talent is, what your creative spark is, there is a way for you to serve your community, but also live an abundant life. So always keep that in mind. I feel like the thing that always comes up when we are talking about getting paid to be ourselves is working a nine to five a nine to five job, right? I think that we live in the entrepreneurial era right now. So sometimes working a nine to five can be looked down upon. And I disagree with that 100%. I think that first and foremost, you need to change your perspective. Perspective is everything. If you have a nine to five right now, and that's where you are in your journey, look at it from a different perspective. Approach this part of your journey with gratitude. Just be grateful that you have something right now to pay your bills that is allowing you to live a life of abundance. You have to really view your nine to five from an abundant perspective. And like, that's just that on that. You just have to be grateful for every part of your journey. And your nine to five shouldn't be excluded from that. You know, we complain about, you know, this isn't where we want to be. We want to be here. But focus on the present because when you're able to focus on the present, you're able to be grateful. And when you're able to be grateful, you're able to create more abundance. So that's that on that. I think another important aspect of working a nine to five is being open to learning. Being open to learning. I am the queen of like I've had so many jobs, y'all. I'm the queen of having a job quitting it and getting a new job now this is before like my college degree days like my post college days this is high school early adulthood like I had so many jobs I wish not even I wish I wish I would have been more like present during those jobs because of course I didn't I didn't want to be working them so I didn't have an abundant mindset but now I look back on those jobs and I realize all of the things that I learned that I can now apply to being a content creator, running my own business, having my own brand. You really, really have to make sure that you are going into it with an open mind and you're ready to learn. Because if it wasn't for my customer service job at Coles, I would have never known how to talk to people. It's same as for my, my first, one of my first jobs at save a which is a grocery store in my hometown. I would have never known how to interact and really talk to people. I was kind of a shy girl. But once those jobs really opened me up to having conversations with people. And now everywhere I go, like when I go to stores, I'm forever having conversations with people. And I'm now able to open the camera and what feels like talking to myself sometimes, but I'm able to talk to a whole community. I'm able to do this podcast. Like, come on, come on. Y'all don't hear me. And if it wasn't for my graphic design job, I would have never learned how to work. Well, I knew how to work a little bit with Photoshop, but I learned so much more when it comes to Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and design. I've been able to create my own ebooks because of the knowledge that I learned when I was working at that job. Please listen to me when I tell you to focus on what you can learn from those nine to fives because you don't know how much they'll be able to help you when it comes to um, getting paid to be yourself, whatever that looks like for you. Focus on learning and growing into the person that you are meant to be so you can use these tools, these skills when you need to. 
something else is like with the nine to five, I know it can be often draining. And I find a lot of people saying that, oh, they don't have time, you know, and I'm not knocking anybody. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in you make time for what you want to make time for. Like at the end of the day, you know, I know we are all adults. Some of us have children. We have responsibilities. But I think it's important to stay disciplined. You really have to kind of treat your nine to five like it's the side hustle. And you have to treat your dream and your goals and your aspirations as your nine to five, as your main job. That's really important. I think oftentimes in life, we're not where we want to be. It's because we lack discipline. That's a large part, an essential part of the journey is having the discipline to wake up, go to a nine to five, then come home and focus on our dreams and our aspirations. So just make sure you stay disciplined. Make sure you stay motivated. Make sure you stay hungry. Make sure you just remain grateful. Remain gracious throughout the entire process and just don't get too comfortable. That's really important. Don't get comfortable where you are because comfort, there, comfort doesn't require growth. You know what I mean? So allow yourself to remain uncomfortable, learning, motivated, disciplined, and you'll make it through this journey. You'll get to where you need to be. So also... Earlier, I talked about how getting paid to be yourself looks different for everybody. Maybe, just maybe, your nine to five is your passion. Maybe your nine to five is your version of getting paid to be yourself. Getting paid to be yourself, I feel like, doesn't always look like an entrepreneurial aspect. Like I said before, I know we're in this age of do it yourself. And that is, that's my journey. And that's the path that I decided to take. And I felt like it was, it was what was best for me. But that doesn't mean that everybody has to do that. Getting paid to be yourself looks so different for everybody. And like I said, maybe working a traditional nine to five, maybe you're just so lucky and so blessed that your job is your passion. You love it. And this is your version to getting paid or this is your version of getting paid to be yourself. Don't get wrapped up in what the media or social media is telling us what we should be doing. Focus on you. And if you feel like you're at a point right now where you are working your dream job, your passion, good for you. And I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you found a way to get paid to be yourself. So I could not talk about getting paid to be yourself without mentioning Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. If you know me, if we homies, if you follow me on social media, you know, like, I love this book. And when somebody asks me about a book, this is the book that I'm going to recommend, like, period. I read this book probably four to five years ago, and it completely changed my life. And I still reference it sometimes when, you know, I forget and I need a little reminder. The very last law... Law number seven is the law of Dharma. And Dharma just means it's a Sanskrit word that means purpose in life. And I actually pulled the book out because I had to. Like, y'all know, I got to drop these gems and I got to make sure that I'm saying it and relaying the message correctly. So I'm reading straight from the seven spiritual laws of success says that the law of dharma says that we have taken manifestation in physical form to fill a purpose which just means like we here in a physical form on this earth because we have a purpose here that we need to fulfill says according to this law you have a unique talent and a unique way of expressing it there is something that you can do better than anyone else in the whole world and for every unique talent and unique expression of that talent there's also unique needs when these needs are matched with the creative expression of your talent that is a spark that creates affluence and affluence really just means abundance and not just monetary abundance joy like all good things the flow of all good things is really what affluence means expressing your talents to fulfill these needs create unlimited wealth and abundance And I'm not going to like get too deep in it, but there's also a part where Deepak is saying that with his children, he told them 
Like, I don't want y'all to focus on grades. I don't want y'all to focus on getting a good job. I want y'all to focus on what your purpose is here on earth in this world. I want y'all to focus on that and figuring out how to serve humanity with your purpose, with your talents. And he went on to say that even though I told my kids, like, hey, I'm not worried about y'all grades. I'm not worried about y'all getting a good job. I just want you to focus on that. They still got a good job. They still got good grades. And they are very well off financially, mentally, spiritually. And I think that if everyone had that same mentality and upbringing when it comes to raising children, the world would be an amazing place, such a better place. And everybody would be so happy because guess what? We're all creating and using our talents to serve humanity. Yeah, I'm not going to get too deep into that chapter because y'all, I can sit here and read that book to y'all this entire episode, but I'm not going to do that because that's not, that's not what y'all came here for. But like I always say, and like this is why I always say this, this law, the law of Dharma taught me this. If you use your talent, your creativity to serve humanity, abundance has no choice but to show up knocking at your door. Like, has no choice. Don't focus on me, 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 me. How can I gain wealth? How can I do this? How can I, you know what I mean? Don't focus on you. Don't focus on yourself so much. One of the main reasons why I started my platforms is because I saw a lack. I saw a gap within the wellness industry. I didn't see black women talking about wellness, taking care of themselves, eating healthy. So guess what? I decided to start making content and serving, serving a community of people who look like me, who related to me. And from that, I've been able to live an abundant life. I've been able to create abundance within my life. This is the very beginning of that journey for me. And I'm very excited that I've learned these things. And I'm able to apply them to my life. So if you can, highly recommend getting your hands on The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. Deepak is the GOAT. And you will learn so much from him. So one of the last things I want to talk to you about today is being focused on and falling in love with the process and not being so focused on the outcome. I mentioned this on an earlier podcast episode, but I read The Atomic, or not The Atomic Habits, but I read Atomic Habits by James Clear earlier this year. And it's one of the books, like I said, that changed my life and I highly recommend it. Atomic Habits has so many gems and I'm forever like referencing it and telling people about it so like I said one of the things he talked about is focusing on the process and one sentence one paragraph one phrase that really stood out to me and like blew my mind because my mind is always being blown like when I'm reading books but you know a lot of times we're often worried about the outcome we're asking how long how long will it take until I reach my goal how long will it take We're asking the wrong question. We should be asking how many? How many? It's about putting in the reps. It's about repetition. If you want to get good at a habit or a skill, you have to keep doing it. For example, if you go to the gym five days a week versus two to three days a week, you're going to have results at a much quicker rate going to the gym more. So it's all about putting in those reps and being open to growing and learning. So don't focus on how long it'll take. Focus on how many. Going back to falling in love with the process, I think sometimes we're so focused on the outcome that we can't even really enjoy the process. I think that's like the one, I think that's like one of the largest pitfalls of humanity that we cannot enjoy the process. We're so focused on getting to the next point in life or or hitting that next goal we fail to really appreciate nowness when you're able to focus on the process and fall in love with it you forget all about the outcome and I think sometimes we're not able to say consistent with certain things is because we didn't we don't love the process and maybe we just don't love this particular thing that we thought we would love so much so then it's time to go back to the drawing board Because if you're not passionate about a thing, 
you're not going to be able to keep up with it. Like, you're going to give up. And I've seen it time and time again. Like, if you're not passionate and you don't love it, you will give up. So make sure that you are. Make sure you're passionate about it. I also think this kind of aligns with the law of attraction and the part of the law of attraction that a lot of people really fail to understand is letting go and forgetting about this particular thing. You know what I mean? Setting your attention, doing the work, fall in love with the work in the process. Once you let go and stop worrying about the outcome, you'll hit your goals. The abundance will come. Everything you wanted. Everything you wish for, everything you pray for will manifest right in front of you. So focus on the process, fall in love with the process and the rest will fall in line. So I wanted to end this episode off with reading. It's so funny. This is actually fun to me. Um, Reading some of the notes that I took, like some of the quotes that Dame said from his Get Paid to Be Yourself interview. Just reading a few, this is from, this This note literally says it was last modified, December 27th, 2017. So, I'm going to just read, I'm going to just read a few notes that really got me through. So, one quote is, I've never seen somebody give 100% and lose. I've never seen somebody give 100% and lose. Period. Like. I feel that in my soul. I feel that in my bones, in my body. If you give 100%, if you try your best, if you give everything that you got to this particular thing that you want, you have nothing to worry about. And so I always kept that in mind. If, I, if I'm giving 100%, I'm going to be okay. I'm not. There's, there's literally, scientifically, mathematically, there's no way for me to lose if I'm giving 100%. Another one that I really loved is if you have enough time to be thinking, then you ain't working. I really like that one. And I know it kind of sounds harsh, but it's true. It kind of reminds me of focusing on the process and not the outcome. Like two very different deliveries, but it's the same message. If you ain't if you have enough time to be thinking, then you ain't working. And then my last quote that I'm going to share with you is. You cannot be great comfortable ever. Growth requires some level of uncomfortableness, period. And uncomfortableness doesn't have to, like, it looks different. Like, I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know where to begin. Like, just doing new things, things that you wouldn't normally do, things that are out of your normal day-to-day activities to expand learn and grow and become this greater ultimate version of yourself a way that I find that I feel like I am able to continue to grow is staying curious about like everything and continuing to seek knowledge knowledge outside of myself but also within myself learning more about myself and self-discovery And on that note, I'm going to end off the podcast right here. I hope that you guys got some type of inspiration, some type of clarity, motivation from this episode. I know way back when I used to watch Get Paid to Be Yourself, it helped me out so much. So I'm hoping that this episode did the same for you. Sending you guys so much love and peace and joy. And remember to stay well and take care of yourself first, always.